Tim Balor's time on the main roster was a wild ride at times. He unfortunately peaked his first month capturing the Universal title and save for a few great moments, it didn't seem like it would get any better. His position was better than most but at the same time it felt like there was a concrete ceiling above him and no matter what he did, he could never break through. His pushes were always stop and start and sometimes he'd come off a great victory against somebody like AJ Styles and the next night he'd lose clean. It was an almost unstoppable cycle. The demon character as well was somewhat of a crutch because of how reliant Balor had become on it and NXT had come out every once in a while but on the main roster once he gets his ass kicked it's like damn I gotta start winning matches. And so he brings him out. Around the summer of 2019, Balor was set to get married and go away for a couple of weeks. He gets jobbed out to The Fiend and disappears. Everyone expected him to show up on SmackDown, but he showed up in NXT. What and why? This was the time period where NXT was competing with AEW, so they needed some additional star power, and even though Balor was an NXT icon, his return was fresh, especially as the main characters on the show were feeling a bit stagnant in their development. Balor felt this was a much needed change due to the ongoing politics of the main roster. It was exhausting and uninteresting to him, and yet had he remained, it wasn't going to get any better. I don't personally believe Balor would have done well on the main roster afterwards. Okay, here we go. On the October 2nd, 2019 episode of NXT, Finn Balor returned. The crowd was stunned, Adam Cole was stunned, Mauro Ranallo was left stuttering over his words. The Prince of NXT was back. He confirmed that Finn Balor was NXT. His intentions seemed clear, but at the same time, it was a bit mysterious because he promised that his future will be his past. What that means, the heart and soul of this entire run is based on when Balor found the most success as the Prince. And he didn't want to wait too long. He immediately dropped Johnny Organo with a beautiful Pele kick and then proceeded to take him out with a 1916. Fresh new start, no jokes, no none, none of that. The smile was gone and his mean streak was back. Okay, this was a great heel turn. What I loved most is that he didn't do one of those steel chair teases where it almost seems obvious. We know you're going to blast him, just do it already. This was from out of nowhere and showed that he wasn't going to be reliant on his previous glory to carry him. It was all about re-establishing himself, and to do that, he has to let go of everything. Balor showed zero remorse and regret for his actions, and he relished and enjoyed everything about it. And NXT to him was a test to re-establish himself from the lights of Hollywood, he's referring to the main roster of course, whereas here, it's Broadway. Balor even went as far as to confirm that the Prince was back. Okay, so who was the Prince? Let me explain this to some of you guys. The Prince was a character Finn discovered down in New Japan. He developed a high level of arrogance and confidence. His charisma increased and before he knew it, his stock which was already high to begin with was at its peak. He unlocked a whole other side to him and in addition formed the Bullet Club which turned into an international phenomenon. That's Prince Devitt. And I would have made a video on him, you know, some of you guys asked me to make a video, but however, New Japan has some very stingy copyright rules. So back to the topic. Now there was fuming. He was upset and laying down for the hottest new thing, all because he wears a mask. Now, he takes off his mask, and there's a bunch in the back that belong in the crowd watching this business. He's like, I don't watch this business, this business watches me, and he threatened Johnny Gargano, telling him that he won't be Johnny Wrestling, he'll be Johnny Watches Wrestling. Okay, a step in the right direction. I don't really like when wrestlers talk about something that happened, we saw him lose, and they talk about it as if it was a fake thing. I don't really like that. But the rest is nice. Johnny Watch's wrestling was the best part, and he showed Balor was on a mission to eradicate the... I don't usually say this, I kind of hate this word, but the marks in the back. He was Mr. NXT, but his allegiance was far from being black and gold. He cost Ciampa his match with AJ Styles to help his old buddy and dropped Matt Riddle with a 1916 on the ramp. His love for NXT was slowly turning into disdain and at times, sympathy. He said that he built this place and now there's just a bunch of boys running it. He made mention of Matt Riddle and before he knew it, he was here. Riddle told him that he can't keep running but he did just that. Balor tried to rebound the following week but was unsuccessful. So a match was made between the two for TakeOver War Games. Finn Balor's mission was to reclaim his throne as the king or the prince of NXT. In addition to rebuilding himself, he wanted to fix things in his stomping ground and the first step was taking out the boys who belong in the crowd. I want to say Matt Riddle would be described as such, but it was definitely an enemy of the princes. I remember watching this match and didn't realize that this style was here to stay for Finn Balor. When we talk about this run, it's always because of those physical and technical matches. This was just that. Is it excellent? No. It's great though, because it was a different side to Finn Balor. His matches weren't anything like this on the main roster. Why? Because he has it his own way here. He has more freedom to structure the match the way he sees fit. As expected, Balor emerged victorious and was looking forward to the NXT title. He objected to Tommaso Ciampa's claim to the belt and faced him in the main event. He got some not so much needed help from the champion Adam Cole. It was good for him that he got one over Ciampa, but not so good to let Balor's momentum continue. And he learned firsthand. All Balor had to do was officially confirm it, and he did just that the following week. Problem was, Keith Lee had a lot of momentum by his side, so William Regal booked the triple threat match with Ciampa. Winner faces Adam Cole for the title. It was annoying for him, but he pulled through to get the title shot using his experience and intelligence to take advantage of Keith Lee. Balor posed a unique threat to Cole's title. He came in as the favorite and found success on a much higher level as well. As always, 
The match was cracked up. When Balor hit that Pele kick, it kicked up to the highest level. He was doing a number on Cole whose arrogance and confidence almost screwed him over. The challenge was absolutely unstoppable until Johnny Gargano returned. He cost him a title and returned with retribution. He brought out a chair and started delivering some shots, sending Balor running. Now, for Johnny Gargano, his admiration for Balor in building NXT was well apparent. However, he made sure to mention that when Balor got the call to go up, he disappeared unlike him who turned down the call in August. With him, NXT flew to higher heights without the Prince and there he was. Balor felt that he had a score to settle despite starting this entire thing himself. Once again he called Gargano soft and told him to stop crying about missing TakeOver. He wants his moment. He's like, you want your moment? Go talk to Regal and they'll have the match. Shortly afterwards the match was confirmed. Ahead of his clash with Johnny Wrestling, the Prince had to focus on one of the toughest wrestlers out there, Ilya Dragunov. This match was what you imagine on a smaller scale. What I mean is that if Balor faced him a year later in the main event of TakeOver, it would have hit harder. This was basically a light version of that. They matched each other, you know, they're a good fit for each other and they probably have some great matches together. But this one only scratched the surface. Balor won but his main focus was on Gargano as evident by his attack later that night. Mustache Mountain got involved leading to Balor outright making a match for himself against Trent Seven. I mean, you guys know how it ended. An interview was held between Gargano and Balor ahead of TakeOver Portland. Balor told him that he waited four years for this and that he's gonna get the chance to prove that he's Johnny Wrestling. For Johnny, he needs to beat the longest reigning NXT champion. It was very important to him. For the Prince, he didn't care about having match of the year. He just wanted to inflict damage and Gargano was excited. He wanted this battle, not the one that lost to Bobby Lashley 17 weeks in a row. The Prince responded saying, that guy is dead. He said that he's gonna grab that flag and tear through Balor's heart to which he responded, I don't have a heart. Good promo. You understood where both guys were coming from, and you also understood that Finn Balor did not want to rely on his old self once again. He erased it. That guy that used to smile happy Finn, gone. He's no longer around. For Gargano, it was all about solidifying that he's the man NXT needs in the dark times. The happy times, and if he beats Balor, it'll certainly add to his NXT legacy. Finn Balor is just another match for him. He's wrestled below the brightest lights against the biggest stars, so once again, he had the edge. Both men had an aggressive streak to them. Gargano initially went after the arm, but more work was done from the opponent who targeted the lick. The match heats up and easily beats Balor's previous match with Adam Cole. He had the entire crowd behind every move, uncertain if that super kick would end, and it turned into an all-out fight with Johnny and Finn pulling out all the stops. The final sequence was cracked up beyond belief as Johnny's retribution blinded into the match and it backfired in a big way. Balor hits the coup de grace and wraps it up with the 1916. Awesome match. Gargano's style was getting him close to victory, but deviating away from what brought him this far and trying to play Finn Balor's own game cost him fatally. It's a forgotten match because of Corona. Things were changing. In the world and that's the thing i don't really remember much from february of 2020 but it was a good one it was a good one and watching it here which i should know was actually the first time i've ever watched it is cool for balor nxt was his chessboard and wanted to leave everyone guessing for his next move the fans weren't really booing him all that much and it was slowly swinging to his favor and it was slowly swinging to his favor the following week finn balor told the fans that he's not a moves guy an internet guy or a guy that talks to the office when the bell rings though he's the guy and his success speaks for itself japan Done it. Mexico? Done it. Universal title? Done. NXT title? Done it. He then talked about how people want WrestleMania, so they try to get to their peak when he's been at his peak for 20 years now. And he's focused on his next challenge. Matter of fact, he thought the opponent would benefit just from being in the same ring as him. So who was it gonna be? Well, Imperium didn't want to let him finish his promo and interrupted. They corrected him saying he didn't do one thing. Despite his career, despite all these accomplishments, he has yet to face the ring general, Walter. Balor tried to take them out but failed miserably and was basically forced to take up the challenge of the NXT UK Championship. He thanked Walter for forcing his hand in this situation and told him that he's not gonna like his response. His response was loud and clear. It was stepping into Walter's ring at NXT UK. He didn't waste time calling him out and it seemed like a dire situation but he managed to one-up them and make a run for it. He later beat Alexander Wolfe in the main event but unfortunately this entire feud was scrapped because of the travel restrictions at the time. Walter didn't like living in America, he preferred living in Europe because everything was close by and simple. So this feud was placed on hold and to this very day they still haven't faced off. I think it's unfortunate because these two would have gone all out. Red chests, Bloody faces, it would have been special, and at face value, it seemed like the feud was going to continue. Balor went through Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel, then from out of nowhere, NXT kicked off the following week with Balor attacked and missing. Nobody knew the assailant, nobody knew who was responsible for the attack. Upon his return two weeks later, Balor expressed doubts. He didn't believe that the wrestlers in the back were snakes until now. He thought, oh, 
It was those guys in the office that were snakes. Now it's a different story. He said that the attacker was looking to get a push trying to attack somebody like him and he said that whoever's looking for the push will get a squash. A while later, Cameron Grimes was frustrated that he never tried something like that and once confronted, was stuttering over his words before he got beaten up. Balor then proceeded to send a message to his attacker saying, to kill a snake, you cut its head off. It did not take long for his attacker to reveal themselves. It was Damien Priest. He dished out a brutal beating with a nice stick, a steel chair, and the reckoning. In his eyes, for him to have his name live forever, he has to take out a prince. Priest's lust for championship gold was well apparent. He had complained about Keith Lee, but the opportunity to take out a talent like Finn Balor was far too interesting. He mentioned that when they face off at TakeOver, Balor's name will die, whereas his will live forever. Damian Priest's aspirations for making a name for himself were at Finn Balor's expense. The Prince refused to be brushed off as a stepping stone, and that's how this TakeOver match was brought. About this one, Balor's aggression was on display early on. However, he learned firsthand what Priest was all about. He sucked all the momentum away and slowed down the tempo, which is something the Prince is usually good at. Not in this situation, though. Balor was quite overwhelmed as Priest was doing as he said in the build. Of course, this didn't last long and it turned into the usual takeover match with back and forth action. Finn had the slightest edge and reverting to this fast paced style did him wonders because he had plenty of takeover experience. Priest was a demon though and didn't make things easy in the slightest. It came down to Damian Priest being too overzealous which allowed for Balor to stomp him out and connect with the coup de gras to win the match. Good one. It's not anything different from what you see during this era of NXT, but it's a solid outing and for Priest, it's one of his best matches in WWE. For Balor, another notch up his belt. Speaking of belts, the Prince was interested in adding the North American Championship to his list of accolades. Keith Lee, the champion, wasn't worried about a challenge, of course, and was even looking to win the NXT Championship. Balor's chance came on the June 24th, 2020 episode of NXT, along with Johnny Gargano in a triple threat match. This match was as expected good, but for Balor it wasn't as good because he lost clean to Keith Lee. Lee was a freight train heading for superstardom at the time, and there was only one more thing he had to do with NXT at the time. Despite the loss for Balor, he was still eager to get that title. Keith Lee relinquished the gold, which was a blessing for him. He didn't need charity, but he acknowledged that he will take advantage of this because Keith Lee is not man enough to challenge him. For Dexter and Timothy Thatcher, their push hit the ceiling. Balor was wrong this time. Thatcher and Loomis put him through hell, and in the end, he came up short. The man was talking about playing chess and complaining about politics, yet he took a second chance. His second chance came up against someone named Velveteen Dream. Who the hell is that? And he came up short again. It wasn't looking real good, but again, there was another opportunity to seize. As Karrion Cross was set to vacate the NXT Championship and Balor saw it as his chance to show that he's the centerpiece. He was included in a fatal four-way Iron Man match with NXT's best. 60 minutes wasn't a great idea and would hamper a match with these four, but the ending was tight. Finn Balor and Adam Cole were level on points and it met a draw. Cole in particular caught it at the very last second so William Regal made a title match between the two. Balor got his chance the following week and as expected, this was great. His run was as he said, came full circle. So how did this go? Both men had the same tactic, to slow down the match and bring the fight. They weren't aggressive, rather methodical. After the commercial, they went for some strong strikes and even engaged in a slugfest. It was very back and forth with no man dominant in the slightest. Fairly even. Cole has his moment, Balor has his, and in a surprise turn of events, Adam Cole became the first person to kick out of the coup de gras. His knee was destroyed and Cole was taken advantage. He connected with a super kick in the last shot, but it still wasn't enough. Both men were spent, tried everything out, and Cole had one more move. The Panama Sunrise. That was unsuccessful and Balor had to get creative and hit a 19-16 from the top rope to win the match and become a two-time NXT champion. Great stuff. Both men were even and it all came down to a special move to wrap it up. But Finn Balor was back on top of the black and gold mountain. They left it all out there and Balor said that this is the reason why he returned to NXT for the titles. It was a good moment for him and it was very deserving, you know, because at the end of the day, Finn Balor's champion was going to help the brand even though it had happened four, five years earlier, it was a fresh change from Adam Cole and the others. So where did he go from here? Well, Balor answered all the questions. He said that he made the brand, and now the brand needs him. And then he added that it doesn't matter who or what, the guys should be looking for him rather than the contrary. He told his a future opponent to look both ways before he crosses the prince. Kyle O'Reilly had to go through hell meanwhile to get his title shot. Ahead of TakeOver, both men went face to face. They clearly had a mutual respect for each other, but that's where it ends. Shawn Michaels wanted to get some answers from both men. Finn Balor had plenty of praise for Kyle O'Reilly, but the challenger saw this as Balor stroking his ego. He told him that this is certain defeat, even asked if Kyle would show up with Undisputed Era or as a man. He denied relying on the group for Sunday, and HBK even asked about a potential power struggle between Cole and O'Reilly if he wins the title. He talked about their differences, mentioned his freckles, and Finn said that he's gonna slap them off his face. This is what Kyle wanted. He's like, oh, you're hiding the demon, the prince in plain sight. Now you're finally showing us the true nature of your character. This was the true Finn Balor, the guy who obviously had praise for his opponents, but mostly 
talked smack about them. They bragged about winning on Sunday, and Kyle said that this is the biggest moment of his life, and Balor told him that this is going to be a lesson in main eventing a night, and main eventing non-stop, of course, talking about himself. So it's like, oh, this is good for you, but at the end of the day, this is regular business for me. O'Reilly thought it was ridiculous that he was considered the underdog and promised to change that perception and change the notion of him being a tag team specialist. Balor praised him for being witty, having charisma, and of course his talent, and he said that he would be NXT champion if this title was on anybody else's waist. Okay, that was good. For Finn Balor, this was business as usual. He's just carrying on from four years ago. Balor's self-assurance and resume made him anything but worried about facing a tag team specialist. The reason why he came to NXT was to test himself and facing Kyle O'Reilly was one hell of a test. For Kyle O'Reilly, it was all about changing the perception around him. He's considered the tag team guy, the underdog, the secondary guy in the Undisputed Era behind Adam Cole. Winning here would finally help him emerge and break that best kept secret vibe around him. In terms of takeover matches, I have plenty of praise with this one. I've been talking about how the previous matches all blend together. You know a takeover match when you see one. Johnny Gargano's in the ring, Adam Cole, they do those finishers, the kickouts, all that stuff. And the matches, they were good, but they lacked creativity to them, especially in 2020, 2020. Because we had seen a bunch of TakeOver style matches and we needed to see something different. Okay, as expected, both men had the technical background and utilized it. Kyle actually went for the arm lock and isolated that arm to the point where it became a red target. This was unlike anything Finn faced in a while. Then from out of nowhere, he kicked Kyle O'Reilly in the liver and that changed the complexion of the match. You see, liver shots are uncontrollable. In MMA and boxing, a liver shot will take you out. No matter how strong you train, how mentally prepared you are, a liver shot cannot be combated. You cannot fight through it. All you have to do is block and pray that it doesn't sting for too long. I should also note that liver shots are incredibly rare. You know, you don't see them that very often. But back to the topic again. He was fighting with all of his heart, but then had to defend like hell after Balor was locking in holds like the sharpshooter. He was wearing him down. The liver was doing a number on him. O'Reilly was grasping for air while Balor was in the need to let him know who he is. At this point, it was it was a question of when would the referee ring the bell? Not if. So much resiliency and spirit from the challenge. It was a gritty, violent match. Everything Kyle O'Reilly was doing was a way of trying to end this match quickly. He got a hold of the ankle and went for the heel hook and Balor was writhing in pain. A match full of blood and emotion and this was what NXT was all about. Balor once again had to go to the liver despite his need to wrap it up and hit the coup de gras to retain the title. Tremendous stuff. As good as this match was, it's a good thing that WWE does not allow the wrestlers to fight like this. The match was too much. Balor and O'Reilly were going all out, and at one point, Kyle connected with a stiff knee that broke Finn Balor's jaw. His jaw was shattered a mere month after Karrion Cross vacated the NXT Championship, so his chances of keeping it weren't looking too good. Luckily, NXT had a big undisputed air on Pat McAfee story going on, but with regards to the match, O'Reilly's selling was absolutely world class here. He didn't do much without grabbing his midsection. He was never energetic, was always grasping for air, and in some ways, this was his coming out party. People saw him differently here because of how he was able to shine bright in a main event match against the guy in NXT. A beautiful story of a man wanting to prove himself at the top level, and I have a lot of good things to say about this match. The vibe, the psychology, the in-ring work, everything about it. There's nothing bad. Of course, the bad is the injury. It was a shame. For Finn, he had to undergo surgery after breaking his jaw in two places, and his status was doubtful for that time being, but he finally made his return on the November 18th, 2020 episode of NXT. He addressed the fans two weeks later and said that War Games was over and Team Sports are done. That's it. Balor said that if you want to know him, you should see him in this ring. And it didn't take long because Pete Dunne interrupted. The Bruiserweight compared himself to Balor and said that it's time they stood face to face. He said that Balor better not get used to being back because he's going to put him on the shelf and take that title. Kyle O'Reilly came out and cut a goofy promo and he focused on Finn and said that he didn't really win that match at TakeOver because... He broke his jaw and was out for two months. Damian Priest interrupted and said that himself and Finn Balor is a marquee match that they both want. Dunn then asked if he's the guy that got beat by Leon Ruff, then they argued and Balor was like, huh, how about? Kyle's mocking Pete's accent, they finally called him out and Balor said that he defends the title at New Year's Evil. The challenger, that's Regal's job. All of a sudden, Scarlet came out. She eyed the champion and he told her that when her boy is ready, Finn is ready. Eventually, Kyle O'Reilly won the opportunity to make it a rematch. Kyle had a point to prove and Balor held resentment over people forgetting that he won the match. They confronted each other the following week and Balor made mention of their match winning the match of the year. He wanted him to come out and take this award, but he didn't wait for the prince to finish talking. Balor explained why he didn't want this award. It was because he had the title and the plates in his jaw to remind him of that match. O'Reilly though saw it differently. It's proof that he belongs at the top of NXT. However, it's a consolation prize for him. He wants the real thing and this reminds him of the time he came short. He said that he'll do anything to win. That says you're the best. That says you're the one. That says you're worth a damn. The champion said that he's going to do everything in his power to make Kyle suffer. The last time they wrestled, he broke his jaw. This time, he's gonna pay. 
That said, Cross and Scarlet interrupted and she said that it doesn't matter what happens in seven days because their fate is sealed. Okay, that was a good promo from Kyle. You felt the emotion behind it was real and I don't doubt it in the slightest. The man has gone through it 15 plus years and in terms of opportunities, this was one of the biggest he's ever received. The match was as expected great. Kyle's jaw was damaged and Balor was hungry to take advantage. He had his own arm being targeted as well, but it wasn't as big of an issue as O'Reilly's jaw. This had a similar style to the previous match, except this time Kyle O'Reilly's jaw was hurt. Chabot's arm essentially became useless as Kyle started fighting back, but it's just the story was more about the jaw, and it was more about the challenger fighting back. The stiff style had done a number on both men and once again Finn Balor was bleeding. He was battered but found an opening to lock in the crossface and retain the title. Great match. This wasn't as good as their other match, and that match was going to be hard to top, you know, because I would stand out especially in a time where takeover matches usually blend in but this was good it had a great story to it and Kyle O'Reilly you actually believed he could win the title and at the time I really believed he was the next champion because of the story they were telling the man was getting closer and closer each time and it had that vibe you know it had that vibe where Kyle O'Reilly was gonna finally beat Balor when they faced off once again so yeah the following week he came out and said that he's still champion Balor had a lot of good things to say about Kyle O'Reilly, but added that he's not on his level. Last week he stepped up, but just like TakeOver 31, he got put down. He's the one who's eating his meals through a straw. The red X on his shirt, it's because he knew he was a target and told his next opponent that they stopped manufacturing the cloth they made him from. Okay. P. Dunn was not afraid of this challenge. He told Balor that he knew that it was going to come down to them, and the reason he's the poster boy of European wrestling is similar to the reason he holds the title. It's because he hasn't taken it yet. Talking about waiting in line, he's not waiting anymore. And they jump him. They went after that arm and inflicted more damage to leave Finn Balor at an even bigger disadvantage. The Undisputed Era had to come in and make the save, and as a result of this, the Prince demanded a match against Oni and Danny. All he had to do now was get a partner. And he wanted Kyle O'Reilly as his partner. That match went their way, but afterwards Pete Dunne assaulted the champion and hurt his fingers. Despite this incident, they had a confrontation the following week and Balor made Dunne get rid of his guys. He told Balor to hold that title tight because when he gets the chance, he's taking it. Balor told him, take over Vengeance Day. You get to face me for the gold. All of a sudden, Edge came out and man did he look so out of place. He likened NXT to pure wrestling and said that his passion was built from watching the show. And now that he won the Royal Rumble, it allows him to choose any champion. He had a lot of praise for Dunn saying he sees a lot of himself in him and Balor. Edge said that he's operating on a different level and is in a zone that's special to watch. He said that the title is intriguing and teased wrestling for the gold. Bro, who believed this? Like, imagine me like, yeah, Edge is coming down NXT to challenge for the gold. Nah. But anyways, Finn Balor and Pete Dunn was a marquee match. In terms of quality, it was full of it and I'd say that style Finn Balor brought to NXT had finally reached its apex with this match. These two men were a perfect match for each other and illustrated technical excellence. P. Dunn had a psychological advantage over Balor who was paranoid over the fixed jaw on the arm. So he made the most out of this opportunity and dissected each finger leaving the prince's arm a red target. He had his own offense going after the leg and isolating it but he failed to reach the levels that P. Dunn did on his arm. The man cheated up and Balor was finding incredible form and all it took for Dunn was to go after the arm and jaw. Balor relied on the ropes to save him and refused to quit the match. It was basically asking for more but he endured it and pulled out moments of pure brilliance to combat this onslaught. He turned his weakness into Dunn's going after the arm and kicking him hard in the jaw before hitting the coup de gras in the 1916 to retain the title. Superb match, incredible sailing from both men, especially Balor who was so banged up. I really appreciated this match at the time and still do because both men had it out to deliver at the maximum potential. We hear, damn this was a good match but it could have been better often. Not here. Pete Dunne and Finn Balor brought a classic vibe with the brutality and violence they displayed here. I highly recommend this match if you never watched it before. You know, it's that good. They had some kickouts, but that wasn't the thing that they relied on here. It was about beating the opponent up so badly to win it. It's probably Balor's best match in this entire run. He had met his match, a man that shared a similar background. They're European icons. They brought their style to NXT and excelled. And man, it was it was a great match. Afterwards, Dunn's guys attack before the Undisputed Era make the save. It felt like Balor was cool with them, maybe even joining the group, but then Adam Cole connected with a super kick before dropping Kyle O'Reilly as well. Then later that week, he drops Balor once again, signaling his intentions. Balor had failed to get a number on Adam Cole, who was under a lot of drama with his own guys. There came a point where Roderick Strong blamed Finn Balor for the Undisputed Era's issues, but Balor though saw it differently. He was like, oh, it was about the title. So he made a match between himself and Adam Cole for the title next week. As for Roderick Strong, he told him that he's not a leader. And just as he's talking about how he'll never do something, he attacks. When it came down to the actual match between the two, Strong had all the fight, but it was no match for the Prince. As for Adam Cole, let's talk about it. It was very similar to their previous match in many ways. Takeover style with the cracked up maneuvers that almost get the win. That type of action. 
Cole had a plan and was executing it well. Final shots of the job, but Balor wasn't giving up. This time he actually connected with a Panama Sunrise and Balor kicked out again, so Adam Cole lost it. Then to top it all off, he saw Kyle O'Reilly and that was it. Finn Balor took advantage and hit the 1916 on the outside and then the coup de grace to retain the title. Then after the match, Karrion Cross was here and Balor knew what's up saying, what took you so long? About that one good. It wasn't as crazy as the piped in, this is awesome, chance made it out to be, but it was good. The following week, Finn Balor said that he beat all of them. Only one man remains, Karrion Cross. A takeover stand and deliver, his time is up, and he came out. He said that this confrontation wasn't going to happen until they settled their affairs. Otherwise, it's meaningless. Cross said that the NXT fans need to know who the real champion is. Finn responded saying everyone wants to be champion until the real champion walks into the room. He told Cross that he walks like a champion, looks like a champion, but Finn Balor is champion, and he doesn't have what it takes to beat him. Cross promised to have Balor knowing what it feels like to be choked out, and he said that Cross is going to know what it feels like to be in the main event of TakeOver and choke. Scarlett gave a sign of the future, and Lorcan and Birch interrupted. This led to a tag team main event, which ended up going awry for Finn Balor as he fell and prayed after showing no respect for the challenger. For Cross, last week he was trying to give respect to a man that didn't appreciate it. Once again, the Prince came out and he took last week as a positive because Cross showed weakness. He said that Karrion Cross is controlled by his emotions. Balor said that he didn't become cold until he controlled his own emotions and Cross. Not so much. Everything he does is a reaction. He's sloppy in those moments. He's vulnerable. And the champion said that at TakeOver, one of two things will happen. Cross will control his emotions, or his emotions will master him, leading to him being dragged into the deep water where he drowns. Okay, okay. Cross's injury provided safety for the majority of the NXT roster. Otherwise, the horoscope in their future wasn't looking good. Finn Balor took advantage of an unfortunate situation and became that guy, the guy of NXT. Here, he gets his opportunity to shut down his final and toughest challenger, former champion that never lost the title. Now, I think it goes without saying, but this was Balor's weakest match. He had to go up against somebody that was not the typical NXT main eventer, but it wasn't bad. Do not think this is a bad match because it is far from that. The Prince on paper had a size disadvantage against Cross, but he made sure to go after that once injured arm to take the edge. Balor was absolutely vicious with the forearms in the midsection and even had some shots trying to catch the liver. He was working like hell to get that comfortable advantage, but even then Cross was a big man. He fought through, took a coup de grace, but still rebounded, was still rebounded and gave the champion a whooping with these reverse suplexes and forearms to the back. And then he hit the big forearm to the back. One, two, three, new champion. As unfortunate as it was, the title reign had to end. The match was solid and told a good story, but I think we all had an idea of Cross winning because Balor was like Drake. He's here for a good time, not a long time. He had the rematch a month later and it was much better. Actually a great match and probably the best match I saw for Cross in WWE. We all knew the result, but it didn't mean the match was bad. This time around, Cross found more dominance. Balor was the one trying to work from under and he refused to be written out. He had the champion scouted at some moments and he even tried to take a page from his book, but Karrion Cross has so much in him and wrapped this match up with so much viciousness and aggression to choke out Finn Balor and retain the title. And with that, Finn Balor's run on NXT was over. In recent years, I haven't seen many wrestlers with a vengeance and vendetta to prove that they're even better than others thought they were initially. Balor from day one was out to reinvent himself. He reinvented himself in 2013 as the douchey leader of Bullet Club and here he established himself as a man that was out to fight the world. His work down in NXT should not be overlooked in the slightest. He changed his mannerisms, promo, style of wrestling, and what that brought him was almost unparalleled success. Because let's face it, the previous NXT title reigns either went on too long or had abrupt endings. With him, there's not many out there that wanted this run to end as soon as it did. And what's funny is that he was champion for several seven months. It's incredible. His in-ring work was phenomenal because of the all-around talent. He could work on the mat, dissect a part of the body, incredible ring awareness and psychology. And he was even better than we thought he was in recent years. He did not take this NXT thing as a vacation, as a way of being like, you know, I'll settle down, we'll wrestle here and there. No, he went all out to re-establish himself and go back to the main roster as a great talent. We all know how that went and he's still working on stuff right now, but what I learned from this video is that if Finn Balor becomes a world champion, he has got to be the same exact man he was here. We need to see the pure prince, the prince of 2020-2021 NXT. A slight babyface but would refuse to trust anybody that came his way. This is the Finn Balor I hope to see as champion. So yeah. Alright, what'd you guys think of Finn Balor's run in NXT? Please comment down below. That's it for this video. Make sure you hit the 1916 on the like button and perhaps the coup de grace on the subscribe button. Peace. I'm at.